And out of respect for my beautiful babies, I'm never putting a fish in this pond ever again. Hi, baby. Come here. Look at them. They're just so sweet, and, and that's the problem. Getting these beautiful koi out of here. Come on, baby. Just so I could show you guys what actually killed my animals. And as you guys can see, three, two, one. Boom! What's up, Raw fam? So we just got back from Australia. I literally just got off the plane. This pond right here actually got attacked by an animal. It's almost like one of those sayings, was it a bird, a plane? No, it was an eagle. <laughs> Yikes. Not an average bird, a, a big scary one. Um, I obviously got back to the Raw fam and my mom showed me some, you know, some pretty disturbing footage, but, jeez. Obviously, I love this pond right here, but I, I, I just don't think I can keep fish inside of it anymore. So I left for Australia with about 10 to 15 koi inside of this pond. They were all beautiful and quite frankly, I loved it. But what really sucks is, is that I came home to some really disturbing news. While I was gone, there's been birds literally dive bombing this pond right here. And I have some gorgeous koi in here. And you know, they're obviously trained. Hi baby, come here, look at them. They're just so sweet, and, and that's the problem. Because they're so well trained, that they'll literally come up to anything. Like, they're literally just sitting, hovering on top of the water all day long, waiting for someone to come over so they could give them kisses. I mean, bro, look at this. How many koi do you guys know that will just come up and consistently just, just show you loving? These fish are beautiful, and out of respect for my beautiful babies, I'm never putting a fish in this pond ever again. I mean, Raw Fam, look at the facts. Would you? Oh, oh, I haven't showed you the facts. All right, Raw Fam, so I have the iPhone evidence right here. You guys ready? And honestly, guys, there's gonna be like a little thing that's gonna pop up just so I could show you guys what actually killed my animals. And obviously, I don't want that thing to continuously keep coming back, so my mom obviously took safety precautions right here. You can see she just put a bunch of stuff over the pond so this bird can't come from like 100,000 feet up in the air and just Boom, but let me show you guys the footage, ready? So this is the live footage right there. And as you guys can see, three, two, one. boom! Oh my goodness, that is crazy. And as you guys can see, this fish is struggling and he's trying to get away from this bird. The bird's obviously struggling, it's going crazy. He's actually holding the fish down low right there. The fish is struggling and it was like a game. So basically what this bird would do is the bird would be sitting there um, and it would hold the fish and it would have to sit there and kill the fish. Because these koi were literally like this big, almost a pound. So of course the bird is literally just sitting there holding this fish, just trying to kill it. And it's gonna take like 15, 20 minutes to kill a living fish, especially if it's fresh, especially if you didn't just fight it catching it. So the fish is just gonna sit there and it weighs a lot, so this bird can't just pick it up and fly away. It's way too heavy. So the bird obviously sits there for what, like like 30 more seconds, realizes this fish is way too big, and literally just flies away. Sucks, it really does, because she just killed my beautiful koi. And my mom's been finding koi all over the yard, not realizing what's happening. And obviously she couldn't call me because I'm in another country. I was in Australia and she didn't know what to do, so she just kind of like tarped the pond. And um, you know, believe it or not, the bird was still diving into the pond. And what really sucks is, is that, you know, this isn't the only bird that's been here. We've also had a big crane, like a big blue heron. And um, l let me show you guys. There's one koi in here that you can see has scars on the top of her head. Let me get her over here. Come here, baby. Come on. Let me get her to come back over here. Now, you see the top of her head right here? See how it has like these dark scratches and like right here it's all dark. The air is all dark. That's actually from the, the bird's beak. And uh, it's actually kind of healed up. And it's, it looks like it happened like a week ago. So this was from a heron. The other one was from like a hawk or something. Guys, if you guys know what type of bird that was, please drop it down in the comments. But long story short, I, I can't keep animals inside of this pond anymore, or at least my high quality koi. They're gonna go inside of those ponds over there. So what most zoos do whenever they don't want birds going in and dive bombing their pools, and honestly, regular community pools that have like Olympic sized pools, 
what they'll do is they'll have a, um, a bunch of fishing line going up in the sky and basically whenever a bird goes to swoop down, it hits the fishing line, gets scared and flies away and that's obviously what I'm gonna do at my facility but this is just my parents' home and honestly I'm just gonna keep like little beautiful little guppies and minnows and just smaller fish that wouldn't really entice a hawk. The only problem is is now these fish are so big that you know predators are actually enticed to eat them and that really sucks. So let's go get the nets, let's go get everything because we're gonna save some koi today. So let's do it. All right guys, I'm gonna pull it off. Honestly guys, we had this thing here um, to maybe like scare off any other birds, but this thing right here could be attracting more birds. Maybe like, this looks like the, the type of bird that was actually pecking the top of the koi. So I actually think I'm gonna throw this away because maybe you know those birds are flying around and then they see this and they're like oh my god there's water there's fish uh if this guy's hunting there i'm definitely gonna hunt so <laughs> i promise you that is never coming back to the royal fam okay um now we got to get a couple more things off the top of the pond all right guys so a little bit of an update guys the lego pond is not done but that is next on my to-do list. The front pond is beautiful. It is ready for fish. So all these beautiful fish from here, this is an aquascape ecosystem pond. It's gonna go from this pond over to that one because that one does have an overhang and it is ready for fish. So one aquascape pond to the other one and it's gonna be beautiful. So let's do it. Hey Dave, can you get the wood off the top of the pond? I'm gonna grab this net. Hey Dave, does all this stuff look familiar? Looks like we're working in Japan. Oh yeah, so this is actually the best possible net you could use for koi. This is a Matsuda koi net. This is about a $550 net. This is a beautiful viewing bucket with Matsuda wooden handle sock net. Here we go. Get some of the water in here. All right, Raw fam, so we're gonna be getting these koi out of here, one at a time, because they're still very high quality koi. And this is literally, quite frankly, the perfect pond for these beautiful gems. Come on, baby. So beautiful, man. That is one koi right there. All right, guys, so we're just gonna keep going through here. Getting these beautiful koi out of here. What was that? I have no idea. We have so many like miscellaneous baby fish to have just like naturally migrated to this pond. Like we have minnows in here that quite frankly I never put in here. There you go, baby. Yeah, he does not know where to go. <laughs> Nice try. Oh, so that little baby. Nice try. So this guy actually has some markings on him right here. Let me show you guys. So this guy right here, let me just show you guys. I do not recommend doing this, but I've been in Japan the last month working with Koi, so I know how to hold them. Relax, relax. So you see that right there? That little marking right there? Yeah. So that right there is just gonna be from a, a bird or something pecking at the top of his fins and all right there. But it's all kind of scabbed over, so it's healed up a lot. Yet again, I do not recommend touching your koi like this. I'm literally at this point a trained professional. Please do not do that. All right, so there's gonna be one more koi in here. It's gonna be a male Jinrin Chagoy. He's, he's, he's gotten big. Yeah, he's spicy. It's because he's a male. Ah. At the end of the day, the female koi will be a much bigger fish. Um, and remember, this, this koi right here is an imported koi from Japan. Um, very gorgeous. It's just, um, you know, needs some better high quality food maybe, some better filtration, and uh, we'll get this koi looking right. So, spin her around. Relax. None of these ponds at all are perfect. There's not one pond in the world that can't be improved somehow, some way. We go over to Japan and I say, hey, why didn't you do this? Why didn't you do that? And he goes, actually, believe it or not, because I'm gonna do it next time. I'm still learning. You'll be surprised. Trained people in Japan 
35, 40, 50 years of working with these beautiful koi and they're like, well, the thing is, is that every time I build one of these houses, it's a couple hundred thousand, almost a million dollars. And uh, back in the day, I didn't know as much as I know now, so that's what I'm gonna do in the future. And uh, does anybody have a million dollars every year to spend on a new koi house? I don't think so. So basically, just keep getting better and better and better, keep expanding your knowledge, and uh, I guarantee you, I guarantee you, five years ago, Blake's Exotic Animal Ranch would not have been able to build as much of a beautiful facility as he would have been able to today as far as business connections, as far as just the way of life. And he's just, honestly, I'm so proud of him. His facility looks remarkable. It's it's insane. It, it's it's in the ground, it's concrete, it's, it's permanent, it's... I mean, honestly, I mean, me and him, we've dreamed about what's happened at his facility and I wish nothing more but amazing success for him in the future. As far as me, that filtration system over there, I would have never, ever, ever built a, a concrete mold around the pond unless someone would have came to my house to do that. Now, I'll never not build the concrete mold just to save my fish's lives. You know, you go off and spend uh, $10,000 on fish, you wanna make sure that your fish are gonna live if a natural disaster happens. But of course, where we are today, we would never have learned what to do, when to do it, how to do it without something going wrong. So, you know, that's just how it is. Now I know, I need fishing line up in the sky to protect from birds. At my future house, at my future facility, I bet you guys a million dollars that I'm gonna have that so no birds could dive bond my aquascape ponds because that's never happening again. So, out of respect for the fish, out of respect for the animals, we had to take those fish, woo! I had to take them out of this pond. Even though this pond has grown up thousands of fish, apparently the birds know where these fish are and there's no pulling fast ones on them. So, what do I gotta do in order to keep fishing here again? Very simple, I just gotta put babies. You know, babies aren't going to entice a hawk to come down and smash the water. So without further ado, let's transport these fish. So, let me show you. Look how gorgeous this one is. So, this is a very dark cherry red. Hey, stop it. Stop it. Stop it. What are you doing, huh? Huh? So you see that dark cherry red on the top of her head right here? Hey, relax. So you see that dark cherry red, beautiful Jinrin scale. So this is a Kohaku two-step with a Jinrin pattern on top. What a beautiful koi. Imported from Japan, but I'm not sure the breeder, so I don't think it's ever gonna get big. I never have any expectations for that fish to get massive. So of course, without further ado, let's get it. All right, all fam, so fish number two, a Jinrin Kohaku with a dark cherry red. And bingo. Bro, that is a gorgeous koi. Very, very, very high quality. Look at her, bro, she's coming back. What's up, bro, fam? Oh, that is so cool. I was actually just gonna grab this Jinrin beautiful koi, but I thought it would be a great time to just show you guys. Hey, relax. You want me to tire you out too? All right, so as you guys can see, beautiful Jinrin colors right there. And on top, oh, you're a female, baby. Oh, you are a beautiful female. You can see right here, relax. You can see right here on the back side. I'm gonna have to hold it the other way. See right here? Come here. You can see right here, it's like a darker color right there. That is from the koi actually getting attacked by that bird. Let me just grab her out of there. And the one, a two, a beautiful koi. <laughs> there she goes. Bro, she's such a fat little baby, bro. She's a little piggy. She's gonna get beautiful and massive inside of this pond. Look at them. They're already like kind of schooling up a little bit. And last but not least, Raw fam, we have this beautiful Sanke, she's okay. Trust me, Raw Fam, the way I'm talking about Koi, I've gained a lot of knowledge in the last couple of months. Just trust me, Raw Fam. <laughs> Just trust me, you know what we're doing now. Beautiful. Now, these guys are gonna have a feeder here with high quality Koi food. These guys are gonna do amazing. This pond's gonna be dope. Raw Fam, this is very cool. Let's go back there, set up this beautiful pond. Rod's gonna be here in a couple minutes because you know we're setting up the beautiful filter system. So let's do all of that. I love y'all fam. 
let's get over to, uh, let's go to the backyard. All right, Raw fam, so now that all of the beautiful koi are safe, I mean, what's left of all the koi. But of course, Raw fam, we have to get this, you know, taken care of so, you know, the koi can come back to the Raw fam. Of course, as you guys can see, we are digging a beautiful trench all the way over to this pond. But of course, before we could continue digging this beautiful trench, hey Jose, you wanna uh, chill it out real quick? Obviously, we would love to get this trench done right now, but we gotta get rid of this beautiful pond first. We actually installed a beautiful brand new pond that would be fresh for these Japanese koi. But there was a hole in the liner, so this pond needs to come out of here. Hey boys, everybody, let's uh, let's grab a side, all right? All right, you guys ready? Yeah. Let's just bring this thing out. Pawn out of here and just 